Welcome to this webinar, which provides insights into literacy skills. These insights take account of research and are drawn from inspectors' findings in early learning and care settings, as well as the guidance provided by inspectors' two settings to promote improvement. All of the advice provided in this webinar should be considered in light of the prevailing public health guidelines. This introductory webinar explores early literacy skills and considers how adults can support children as their literacy skills develop. We will be focusing predominantly on oral language and early reading and writing skills. When we think of the term literacy, the skills of reading and writing might be the first to come to mind. However, it is really important to know that the foundations of literacy are set very early on in a child's development. In the first weeks of life, a young baby will smile. This indeed is an early sign that a baby is communicating. As the baby develops, he or she will continue to smile, make eye contact, use gestures and nonverbal cues to communicate with the world. These early efforts continue and later on the baby will babble and repeat sounds, listen and respond to sounds and recite rhymes. Ultimately, he or she will move on to share books and stories, to write and to use technology to communicate. The importance of supporting the development of literacy skills in a child's early years is noted in ASHTER, the Early Childhood Curriculum Framework. This is the framework that underpins practice in early learning and care settings. ASHTER notes that emergent literacy is concerned with children developing a growing understanding of print and language as a foundation for reading and writing. Through play and hands-on experiences, children see and interact with print as they build an awareness of its functions and conventions. In addition, the Quality Framework for Early Years Education Inspections includes a signpost which states that a child's emergent language literacy and numeracy skills are fostered within the setting. This highlights the importance of speaking, listening and playing with children to nurture their ability to communicate and express their ideas through language, print and creativity throughout the child's time in an early learning and care setting. In early learning and care settings, inspectors frequently observe that children are supported to communicate in a variety of ways and use and interpret nonverbal communication strategies. Where high quality provision is noted, inspectors frequently praise the opportunities that children have to speak and listen to their early years practitioners and their peers. As the child progresses to primary school, his or her learning in language is underpinned by the primary language curriculum. A child's literacy skills can be greatly supported by frequent and high quality interactions with adults, for example, the child's parents, family and early years practitioners. We will now look at some strategies that can be used to stimulate and extend children's use of language. Firstly, we'll consider the importance of being responsive. When we respond positively to children in their verbal efforts to communicate, they learn that using language is positive, can be fun and that language has meaning. Adults have a significant role to play in reinforcing children's efforts to communicate. Young babies may communicate by making eye contact, by pointing a finger and by babbling sounds. It is important for us to indicate that we understand. Then we can respond to their nonverbal cues by adding language to their actions. For example, when a baby points at birds, we can say, oh, I see you are looking at the birds. Let's go and visit them together. Verbal and nonverbal reactions are important. The first of these being our facial expressions. You may notice the excited reaction a baby will give when greeted or encouraged with a warm smile. We may also respond verbally by extending the child's thoughts and ideas through open-ended questioning. We may even write down or draw that the child is sharing or discussing. 
In early learning and care settings where exemplary practice is noted, inspectors frequently highlight that practitioners annotate the child's ideas, explanations and observations. It is often noted also that practitioners and children have conversations that include open-ended questions which prompt children to express their views. This type of responsiveness to the child affirms and encourages the child to keep communicating their ideas in various ways. The repetition of words, rhymes and songs increases a child's vocabulary and language as he or she engages in a playful way. Simple repetitive songs with actions are some of the first ways that babies learn new language. As the child progresses, he or she can take the lead by repeatedly singing or reading familiar stories and songs. The child may clap his or her hands to the rhythm or use simple percussion instruments. The child can be encouraged to predict the text by interpreting the pictures in the book. This type of involvement with stories furthers and consolidates the child's learning. Verbal storytelling, puppet shows and role play are also great ways to encourage open-ended and creative use of language. Expansions are a great way to model how to combine words into short phrases and sentences using the words that the child is already saying in context. Expansions help to build on a child's ideas, contributions and interests to extend conversations. For example, a child may point and say, car, and the practitioner may respond, yes, that is the big blue car. By modeling language that is more complex, we can support a child's ability to process new information and learn new vocabulary and grammar. Affirmations help to nurture self-esteem and a positive mindset and encourage a child to speak and use language confidently. By providing affirmations on a daily basis, we are giving the child messages that will serve them well later in life. For example, you can read the book, you can tell the story. Inspectors frequently recognize the value of positive interactions between an adult and a child that affirm the child's developing strengths, skills and confidence. Young children will gradually develop an appreciation that symbols are also used to communicate. This understanding develops informally. For example, as a child plays and interacts in an early learning and care setting, he or she will experience a well-labeled, print-rich environment which includes signs, labels, books and posters. The child will also observe adults reading and writing messages. This understanding is the very foundation of literacy development. A number of factors are crucial for the development of a child's reading and writing skills. It is beneficial, for example, for a child to experience high quality interactions which prompt him or her to communicate and express their thoughts and ideas. The child is motivated to use words and sounds to express ideas and he or she will become motivated to explore how symbols and shapes can be used as representations of thoughts and ideas. Early language experiences, including talk, listening to and reading stories, mark making and play are important in supporting the development of a child's literacy skills. For example, a child may use a book to role play, reading a story to their doll. Here the child can use their words to describe the pictures and even freely extend and add to what is in the book. The child has learned how a book can be used to tell a story. This provides an important base for later literacy. Children's early literacy experiences and dispositions are positively nurtured informally through play. Play is fundamental to how children can explore, practice and engage with language and literacy skills. In high quality settings, inspectors note that children are highly motivated to engage in early reading and writing activities throughout their play. The children will use resources independently and freely to make marks, draw and write. For example, as they play in the shop, they may use symbols and doodles to represent shopping lists. They may dress up and role play a doctor and patient scenario and use symbols to write out a prescription. As they play, they may access books and peruse them with each other and with the practitioners. 
Through their play, they can express their thoughts and ideas by engaging in role play, singing, dancing, and using props and puppets. It's important during this time to provide children with opportunities to play with language and sounds, for example, nonsense words and high and low sounds. And of course, it's essential that the child will experience lots of songs and nursery rhymes. This extract from an early years education inspection report highlights how this particular setting nurtured the children's literacy skills through positive interactions. It also highlights the variety of materials available for reading and writing during play. These photos represent the range of activities that can support the development of a child's literacy skills. Story sacks and props, opportunities for free drawing, using digital texts, playing with loose parts, playing outdoors with construction toys, and mark making using chalk. It's important to nurture positive dispositions towards literacy. And in this regard, playful, fun and engaging experiences are important. The environment plays an important role in inviting children to engage with and enjoy materials that support pre-literacy skills. Inspectors frequently affirm the use of high quality books and reading areas for the children to use as individuals and in small groups. Providing children with open access to a wide variety of reading materials, including books, magazines, manuals, homemade books and catalogues, offers many benefits. Of course, the children will be introduced to new words, concepts and emotions through their play. In addition, their imagination and curiosity will be stimulated by books and books will support a child's developing cognitive, social and communication skills. Books offer children a world in which they can explore and understand change, new or challenging events. Books can be used to enable children to hear new vocabulary and phrases and to explain strong emotions and new experiences. Positive dispositions towards language can be nurtured as children experience times where they are frequently read to. It's highly beneficial for children to hear stories read out loud to them. It is one of the most significant experiences to support children to learn language. Children enjoy familiar stories being read repeatedly and they enjoy new and exciting books based on their favorite topics. This can also include verbal storytelling as the children make up stories of their own. In high quality settings, inspectors find that where adults frequently engage in reading aloud and also role playing stories with children, the children's early language and literacy skills are very well developed. It is worth noting that the discussion that takes place around the reading is of significant importance. It's important too to encourage children to tell their own stories. In addition, children could reconstruct stories using photos and props. There are many benefits to this practice, including extending vocabulary, relating to personal experiences, providing children with language to create and express their own world and ideas. It is important to set aside time every day to sit down and share a book. Gather a variety of books which are fun and engaging. Encourage the child to touch and feel the book. Point to objects in the book and talk about them. Ask questions about the pictures and what you think will happen next. Respond to interest and don't be afraid to improvise or just talk about the pictures. And as children move around in various environments, it's helpful for them to receive guidance towards recognizing and using print in a social capacity. For example, road signs, toilet signs, menus, signs in shops and in restaurants and playgrounds. Before long, the child will recognize and interpret a stop sign and will identify the names of his or her favorite shops. Here, we have provided a list of resources which may be of interest to you. 
we would like to thank you for taking time to listen to this webinar. If you have direct queries or comments arising from your engagement with this webinar, please use the dedicated email address provided to contact us in the Department of Education. We thank the listed primary schools and early learning and care settings for sharing photographs with us. Goodbye.